Hey guys, what's up? So today's video is going to be about one of my animals getting sick. Fun, yay, terrific. And I'm gonna start my video off with talking about my hair because it pisses everyone off when I do it and it's just so much fun. So first off, I got a tan. Very minor tan, but just a little bit. I'm like half dead white now instead of like fully dead ghost white. I'm like a decaying person white, you know? I have a little bit of color in me now and it's bringing me to life and I love it. Also, I dyed my hair back to my very natural color. This is the color I have naturally and I am living for it. I love it so much. I'm using stupid terms like living for it, which is something I've never used in my life, so you know I'm really feeling my hair when I'm using terms like that. So this story is about how my axolotl Mushu, uh, you know how I told you guys she was egg bound? If you don't remember, here's me saying that. Now Mushu is not eating today because she's having some problems, some lady problems. See, she is a female and she currently has some eggs in her and she's having some issues with them. Basically, when an axolotl goes to lay eggs, if they're not fertile, they'll just reabsorb them from what I have learned online. Everyone online tells me not to worry and just to wait this out, but typically um, when a female axolotl suddenly goes off of food and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the water or the temperature or anything like that, that it's most likely that they're egg bound. Like I said, the good thing about that is they just reabsorb the eggs. So I'm supposed to just wait it out. Well, I was completely wrong. She was not egg bound. She actually had a fungus and it took me six weeks to realize it. Well, actually, okay, it took me five weeks, but week six is, where we are now. At first I thought she was egg bound, which is why she wasn't eating, because she wasn't losing weight, but she had no interest in food, and so I thought she was just, she was just having some lady problems, is what I thought, so I was leaving her alone. And then week five, which was last week, I noticed, um, yeah, no, she has a fungus. If you wanna know how to look for a fungus on an axolotl, sadly they are extremely prone to it. They either will get this white fuzzy stuff in their gills, or white patches all over their body. Now this is called columnaris, columnaris? Um, I'm not a vet, I just own a lot of pets, okay? So, it's called that. It really, really sucks. It's so much better to catch it right in the early stages and treat it right away because you are gonna have a lot more success and if you wait five weeks like I do, your axolotl is most likely gonna die. So, I'm gonna tell you guys how I actually cured her. <sighs> It was an awful week. I was so stressed. I cried every time I looked at her because she looked absolutely awful. But I decided to combine a few treatment methods that I had read up about online and try to cure her, of course. I wasn't gonna give up just because it was so late into it that I finally you know, caught that it was a fungus. I wasn't gonna give up. I was gonna make sure I do everything I could. Here is the process of treating her and the wonderful ending. It, it's a great ending. First what I'm gonna do is add oxygen to the water because She's gonna get a little stressed. Increased oxygen will help her stay more calm and help her breathe easier during this time. This is about two gallons of water and we're gonna add a tablespoon per gallon of water. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of salt. We're gonna just use regular aquarium salt for this. Now if you look at the directions on the side, it is gonna say to add one tablespoon for every five gallons. We're gonna actually add a tablespoon for each gallon of water. So this is gonna be a little stronger. <laughs> You want this water to have the same temperature and the same pH as the water that your axolotl is currently in. And that way he or she will not go into, uh, oh, sorry. And, and that way he or she will not go into shock from the temperature difference or the pH difference of the water. Next I am going to add iodine. <laughs> one tablespoon of salt per gallon of water, an air stone, and just a few drops of this antiseptic, like four drops in the four gallon bucket, and then in her water too, since I was doing daily water changes, I would add about eight drops, and then I would change the water out every day so it wasn't like too much antiseptic. Deep in my research, I found an article that recommended this. They said it can help it can help heal the axolotl's skin, but it's really important not to overdo it. If the water starts turning orange, you've definitely added too much of this and it could really, you know, end up harming the axolotl because this is not something you normally find in water. It even says caution poison on it, so, oh. So it's intense. And now we just have to wait for the salt to dissolve, and then once it is dissolved, we can go ahead and put her in there. <laughs> Okay, so now to get the axolotl into the water. I personally think that um, nets are very harmful for them. It can get their gills and their limbs caught into the nets and they're very fragile animals. So I just take a clean pair of hands and I scoop her out with my hands, which you have to be very patient because they're going to be scared of you during this. 
Now we are going to set a timer for 10 minutes and we're going to leave her in there for 10 minutes. Please make sure you do not leave your axolotl in the salt dips for more than 10 minutes because after that it can really, really hurt them. Now Mushu looks absolutely awful. It really actually makes me really emotional to look at her because she is in such bad shape that it, it literally, like, I get teary eyed. She's in really, really bad shape. You could see she's just so bad. It's not good. Just to show you guys really quick, she is so skinny. Those are not fat rolls. That is from being so underweight. Axolotl's tail should be straight. She's curving hers from stress. <laughs> Before I start this next treatment, I'm gonna see if she wants to eat. Highly doubt it, but always gotta try. Okay, so she showed a tiny interest in food for the first time in six weeks. She didn't run from it, she actually opened her mouth. So I went and I cut them up into really small pieces. We're gonna see if we can get her to take a really small piece. If she takes even the smallest piece, that is going to be the most promising sign I have seen in literally six weeks. So I am really, really excited about this. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think, I think she ate it. I want to cry, but I'm not going to. I'm so happy. I really, really, really thought she was gonna die. I'm so used to things going bad. Like once an animal gets sick, I'm just like, oh great, there's no hope. They're freaking dead. I mean, my frog's butt fell out. My seahorse aborted his babies. I mean, I have a weird history. I like to blame it on the fact that I get them from places where they're in bad shape to begin with. So I feel like they're just not 100% healthy. So like when I took the Pac-Man frog from a place that was mass breeding them, of course his butt was gonna fall out. That's my freaking luck. My seahorses, I was told they were captive bred, but they were wild caught. So I was treating them as if they were captive bred when really they needed to be treated as if they were wild-caught seahorses, which you do have to take different precautions for wild-caught seahorses, so I blame that for him aborting his babies. But this time, genuinely, I do not believe it was anyone's fault other than my own. I just don't think I did enough water changes and that caused a fungus. Also, I had recently switched out her filter and while I was away, someone filled up the water a little too high, made the flow a little too intense, and I just think combined all of that and she just got a little too stressed and got this fungus. So I have now added a fan at the top of the tank to keep it at 65 degrees and I have a thermometer to watch that carefully and I have changed out the filter to a sponge filter. Now with the sponge filter, I'm going to have to do a lot more water changes and spot cleaning, but it is the safest method for the axolotl not to get stressed. There's not gonna be all that crazy flow from a regular hang on back filter. It's going to be very subtle. And just add oxygen to the water and clean it very subtly instead of super intense. And she is doing so much better. Her tail has straightened back out. Her white patches haven't gone away completely yet. They have gotten a lot better, but her appetite is crazy now. She still can't chew earthworms yet. I believe going six weeks without eating just weakened her jaw. She has a really hard time eating the earthworms. She can get little pieces down, but she normally will just get, you know, one big slurp and just suck up the earthworm. But now I can give her a little tiny bit and she'll chew on it for like 10 minutes. But instead I'm just doing bloodworms and krill She's taking this a lot better. They're a lot smaller and easier to swallow. So I think with time she'll be able to go back to eating um, Earthworms, so yeah, but that is how I have saved Mushu and it took four treatments really at the fourth treatment You should see some kind of progress. You should see their appetite slowly return It is important to understand that if your axolotl has a fungus no matter how much you treat it, if you put it back in a tank where it's going to get stressed out, the fungus is not going to go away. Please make sure you have very low flow in your tank. I recommend a sponge filter. I used to recommend fluval filters on their lowest setting. I used that for two years and really didn't see too much of an issue. But now I'm just saying the safest route you can go is the best route you can go. So sponge filters are a great, great, great filtration system for axolotls. But you do have to do weekly water changes along with spot cleans every time you feed them. It's a lot of work, but it's way worth it so your axolotl doesn't end up starving herself for six weeks and ending up on her deathbed pretty much. It was a terrible situation that I'm so glad has been resolved and actually was able, I was able to fix it. It was heartbreaking because she's only two years old. They can live to be 10, 15 
years old. So I would have never forgiven myself if she would have died at two years old because I didn't keep her tank in the right conditions. I guess I got too comfortable with how easy it was and let something slip up and that was the price I paid. And I really hope that my mistake can help teach you guys and help you avoid having a sick axolotl. Also note that there's a lot of times that people recommend fridging an axolotl. Now I do not recommend fridging an axolotl when it has a fungus. When you fridge an axolotl, their metabolism slows down. Now, if they have a fungus and their metabolism slows down, they're not gonna be able to fight it or you know, get through it. It's just gonna sit there and not get any better. Fridging an axolotl is really when you have problems in the tank or if they're not eating for another reason other than a fungus. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. I do have some videos from a meet and greet that I did a few weeks ago. Tyler Ruggie did come out here and I do have some videos with him that I need to post. I have so much to post, so just stick with me guys. I'm trying to get all the content out that I can. Make sure to check out my second channel if you haven't yet. I'm going to be posting so much content on there, so much bonus content, and I really, really would love to have a following on there. If you haven't checked out my merch yet, please go look in my description at my merchandise because it's really cute and we actually have some new stuff coming soon and I'm super excited about it, so keep an eye out. Get the items we have now while you still can and have an amazing day. Tomorrow I'm going to be going around to some animal shelters and in trying to help out the animals that were affected by Hurricane Harvey. I'm gonna see what I can do, whether it be, you know, donating or, you know, volunteering, whatever it is. And I'm gonna upload a video about it and we're gonna talk about different ways that you guys can help too and help contribute and help everyone that was affected by this disaster, including the animals. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much and yeah, have an amazing day. Bye. See that his gills have grown a lot. They're super feathery now and in the picture in, on the right is when I got him. He did not have the super feathery gills and he's also really big and has a big tummy now. <laughs>